I think it's very important that Australia knows that this, this is the start of our vaccine program. It will almost certainly not be the end. Uh, there will be a need for boosters. But Tom, a note of caution when it comes to the vaccine rollout. A lot of people hope that as soon as they get the vaccine, as soon as the majority of Australians have that, that we're going to see borders open up to the rest of the world. Health authorities tell you that that is simply not going to be the case. They are not confident yet on the impact that these vaccines have on transmission. What about this idea of a vaccine passport for Australians? Is that something the AMA is, is backing? Uh, we're not backing a vaccine passport at this stage because uh, none of these vaccines have been shown to actually reduce you the chance of you catching uh, the COVID virus uh, nor transmitting it to other people. We'll get more data about that in time. But right now, having been vaccinated doesn't actually mean anything in terms of the chances of you bringing the, the illness into another country. We urge people to be vaccinated, but a key message also is just because you're vaccinated, you can still get infected and be infectious. Many Australians have heard that getting vaccinated does not stop us from getting COVID, and that if we do get it, we could still infect other people. Is that true? Thank yes. Professor Kelly might answer that. Thank you. What is the risk of being infected by a vaccinated person with COVID compared to an unvaccinated person with COVID? Well, it's lower. I'm not sure I can give you an exact amount. I think um, uh, Professor Murphy earlier talked about the, the issue and also the, uh, Senator Colbeck about the issue of transmission uh, and how the, how the vaccine affects that. We're getting more information and it seems like there is a definite um, influence on transmission, decreasing transmission, somewhere between 30 and 60 per cent. What decrease in transmission of infection would stop restrictions such as lockdowns, masks and social distancing? So that's a matter that we've been charged by national, we as in Australian Health Protection Principal Committee, of which I chair, uh, by National Cabinet to look at. Uh, and so it's a matter for, for National Cabinet. There, there will be, um, there's a series of, of uh, papers that we're preparing exactly to answer those questions. Um, some have been pr produced already and presented and there'll be more uh, in the coming meetings. Thank you. How many times and how often would each of us need to be injected for the vaccine to be effective? And for each time, for how long does the, vac does the effect last? So as I mentioned in, uh, earlier in the, in the hearing, um, very good protection uh, from, from one dose of vaccine, either the AstraZeneca or, the, um, or Pfizer, in relation to, particularly in relation to severe infection, but also to symptomatic infection, uh, and to a lesser extent, asymptomatic infection. I think it's very important that Australia knows that this, this is the start of our vaccine program. It will almost certainly not be the end. Uh, there will be a need for boosters into the future, particularly in relation to the variants of concern, of which there are four now uh, that have been designated by the World Health Organisation. And some of those we already know do affect the vaccine efficacy. So it's likely we will need to have boosters into the future. How long the, the, that two-dose um, effect works um, is still, we, we don't know. We, we know it's at least six months because that's the studies have been looking at it for six months. Uh, it's almost certainly longer than that for the original strain, but the variance of concern is a, adds another complexity to it.